Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. Our broadcast today features a conversation from our most recent Meta Strategy Digital Symposium on the topic of scaling AI to deliver new customer experiences. The conversation featured Amir Aruni, the Chief Information Officer of Discover Financial, and Dean Del Vecchio, the Chief Information Officer and Chief of Operations at Guardian Life. The gentleman who led the conversation was the Vice President and Head of Meta Strategy's Central Office, Mike Bertha, who joins me now. Mike, welcome. Good to see you as always. Good to see you, Peter. Well, Mike, uh, what an interesting topic here. I mentioned it a moment ago, scaling artificial intelligence to deliver new customer experiences. AI certainly is on the in, in the minds and on the lips of so many technology and digital executives uh, that we're in touch with frequently. Uh, and contemplating new customer experiences, especially uh, in light of the ever-changing world we, we live in, it's so important for technology and digital executives to keep their mind uh, on that as well. But I'd love for you to take a quick moment and reflect on why you felt this was an interesting topic for us to tackle at our digital symposium. Sure. Well, you said it. People, consumers, more time than ever on digital properties and those digital experience. In a given day, people get up, they go to work. A lot of times today in a virtual setting, what else do they do? They, they go on Amazon, they order groceries, they manage financial accounts online, brokerages, credit cards, insurance products. So if you add all that up in a given day, that consumer might navigate a dozen or more digital properties or experiences across the various devices that they're using. And even though each of those experiences might be representing a different industry or, or a product, the consumer is constantly benchmarking their experience against the last digital experience they had. So if you just went on to Amazon to order some paper towels or other household goods, and you're now on your online banking platform, your expectations are set by the experiences you just had or the last digital experience you just had. And in this hyper competitive digital landscape that I'm painting, using AI to make new customer experiences or existing customer experiences more intelligent, more automated, more frictionless, continues to be the move that we see across industries and across geographies from the leading CIOs that we engage with. Yeah, that's a great overview, Mike. And the, the two uh, gentlemen that you spoke with in this conversation, Amir Rooney of Discover Financial, Dean Del Vecchio of Guardian Life, really interesting executives with broad purviews in their companies. Talk a bit about the relationship between them and the topic you just introduced. Sure. So Amir and Dean fit really you know, closely in, into the rationale for this piece in this segment, um, being that they're both pioneering executives who through our um, previous correspondence on the podcast um, and other channels where we engage with digital executives, they've shared some really interesting ways that they think about AI and how to differentiate their experience in that landscape. And specifically, they are, in the case of Amir, uh, the credit card or the financial product, and Dean, in case of insurance product, they are in that mix and they're competing against retail um, and several other digital experiences that the consumers have. So we really wanted to channel their thoughts on how they think about the experience and how to use AI. Well, uh, without further ado, let's go to that very conversation. Scaling AI to deliver new customer experiences featuring Amir Rooney of Discover Financial, Dean Del Vecchio of Guardian Life, in conversation with Meta Strategies, Mike Bertha. Uh, welcome uh, to the virtual stage, uh, Amir and uh, Dean. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and start off with you, um, Amir. Um, so as many of you know uh, already, Amir, he's the Executive Vice President and CIO at Discover Financial Services, a digital banking and payments company with revenues in 2020 of about 13 billion. Um, so when you think about customer experience at Discover with regards to how you use AI ML, how do you really see that creating value at the highest level, Amir? And you know, one of the things I've heard you say before is it's used as a, an accelerator of the pace of technology. So maybe if you could kick us off and talk a little bit how you think about value. So thank you very much, Michael, and hello, everybody. And I'm very excited to be part of this panel today. And Discover is a financial services with uh, uh, probably, you know, card payments and consumer banking products like savings and student loans, mortgages. So our business is totally about information and data. 
we know that through data and automation, we can give our customers timely and actionable information that empowers them to get more value from their interaction with us. So let me just give an example. Analyzing of past spending behavior of any customer and usage of the cashback rewards is, 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 is an important part. We can advise our customers which right with, with the right recommendations on what to purchase and when to do it. And they're also able to save more monies and earn, earn actually a greater rewards. So we are creating real-time intelligence and automated customer experiences. Uh, in another area, we are using artificial intelligence on fraud detection, real time. So with artificial intelligence, machine learning, we drive innovation. We create better experience for customers. And also very important, and let me emphasize that, we create a lot of value for our employees. We enable them to making faster and smarter, better decision. So the benefits is immersed. So. Thanks, Amir. I mean, so highlighting a lot of personalization in terms of the customer, um, a lot of automation and productivity, both on the customer and the employee experience side of the house as well. That, that's great. So, so I'll kick it over to you, Dean, and just by a quick introduction, so everyone knows uh, you're the CIO, as well as the chief of operations at Guardian Life. Um, about $11 billion company offering a variety of financial products, insurance products, solutions that help individuals, employers, and other stakeholders in the greater insurance and financial ecosystem. Um, I, I wanted to tee up a similar question to you, but given that Guardian has such a, a wide suite of uh, products and the, the touch points and uh, consumer journeys are very different across those. So I was wondering if you could talk about how you think about it at, at Guardian and what are those maybe key moments of truth and, and how you use AI to really enhance those moments of truth? Sure, absolutely. And uh, thanks for having me as well. Yeah, so very similar to uh, what Amar just uh, talked about is we have the same opportunities, you know, as you can, you can imagine, insurance is based on data and analytics. You know, the whole underwriting uh, process that takes place is all based on information. And whether we get that information traditionally in the past, the information would come from, you know, drawing fluids or or a blood, you know, in, in cases to get your health information. And more and more health information is available uh, that's provided by our participants or so our members, as you mentioned. We're in the individual market side of the house, so we provide life insurance products. So you can imagine the underwriting that goes into underwriting a whole life policy or disability for that matter. And then on the group side of the house. Same thing where we have benefits like dental or vision, uh, critical illness, information and AI has allowed us to do a lot more things a lot more easily and providing less friction in the process. So just think about it, the underwriting process. Once you get to the point where you tell an individual they have to go to the, you know, a Quest lab or some sort of lab to go get fluids drawn, the process really slows down and it takes a very long time. So we used to be around on average, say it's a 45 day process. We could do that in 30 seconds today you know, for certain policies, for certain products. So just think about, you know, the, the time to market, the time to, for an individual, how easy it is for somebody. And by the way, the majority of the population is underinsured. And some of that's because of the friction in the process. It's not an easy, uh, there's a lot of manual steps in, in play. And we've been able to leverage automation and data and analytics uh, for the ease of use uh, for our employees as well. So when it comes to servicing customers, uh, my whole thing that we've been focusing on here is how do we shift left? So just like in a development mindset, how do we shift left for our customers as well? And how do we put the power and, and tools and information in their hands so they can make better decisions, they have access to information, they can self-service when they want to. And then when they do want to speak to somebody, we make that as easy as possible as well. And that's where it comes into play. How are we leveraging technologies for our employees to provide better services and capabilities? So it's 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 twofold. It's internally, how do we you know enrich the lives of our our colleagues and, and make their lives easier to do the job and to service our customers, and then how do we make the lives easier for our customers to make us one of the easiest companies to do business with? 
That, that, that's great. It makes a lot of sense. Removing friction, you know, for all the different stakeholders, helping the customers get through that, that sales and underwriting process faster. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I should probably take a look at your guys' products. Um, you should. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, Amir, so, you know, kind of changing the lens of for the other participants here that are, you know, starting to dip their toe or maybe they're fully immersed. Um, talk about your, your team structure with regards to AI and ML and how you think about identifying the use cases, piloting them and, and, and scaling them. So talk a little bit about that, if you will, Amir. Yeah, uh, so I think that's a very important part because you can have ideas, but how are you going to deliver that ideas and how are you going to get benefits from them? Um, so I would say the traditional way of working in technology and data is over. And what was actually that traditional way of working? You had an idea coming from a business partner sitting in a room and thinking about the product or services and then move it to someone else making impact analysis, uh, uh, driving some data, moving from him or her or the the, the people were working actually on that through a document to someone else. And when it came actually to developers, it was already a year later. And in most cases, uh, uh, the, the, the idea from the beginning until the moment that the developers start to code was changed significantly just because of many handovers. So I'm talking about a new delivery model which is very important uh, when, we, when we make solutions quickly. It is about iterating, it is about adopting. So if the solution is not quite right, uh, ability to change it and go again. So we started actually to build a delivery model, which is based on testing, adopting, changing, learning and improving again. Uh, we are applying so-called greenhouses for many of you uh, terminology, which is which is familiar to. The team structure is small, but importantly, and this is a very important element, the team is end to end. They are able to take responsibility and ownership of the product or the model, uh, reducing the dependencies because that is something which is killing. You know, you have an idea, you want to work on that and you need someone else and you need to sit down and wait until that team or person is available. So a delivery model, which is based on end-to-end -end ownership, uh, reducing the dependencies and increasing the speeds. And, uh, and, and when you think about that model, you know that everyone which you need needs to be available so you don't need to wait. So use cases which works, uh, you know, will move to production. And then we apply how we work, as I said before, the cycle of testing, adopting, changing, learning, and improving. And that is doing by a persistent teams working together, consisting of multidisciplinary people. Uh, for example, for card business or student loans, the data scientists, technology experts, model developers, and colleagues from data marketing, but also risk legal, uh, are all working together to think, design, build, and run the models. So that is how we develop actually new models, getting from idea into production. Very interesting, Amir. I mean, we see lots of CIOs organizing cross-functional teams around products um, for overall uh, technology and product development, but obviously a model that works well in uh, the AI ML as well from, from what you're saying. And so Dean, I'll, I'll come back to you now for uh, another question. Talk, you talked a lot about removing friction, automation, meeting the customer where they want to engage. I'm wondering if there's any particular compel particularly compelling use cases that you guys have had at Guardian that you could share and talk a little bit how it's helped drive business results? Sure. Yeah. And I would say that one of the things that we've noticed, and I'm sure everybody else has experienced as well, was over the last year or so, 18 months or so with COVID, the adoption of the technology has really accelerated. So I think it's actually the users are actually getting caught up with what's been available but just hasn't been adopted. So the pace of adoption, the pace of use um, has really accelerated for us. So I would say on our, on our individual market side of the house, we saw that with 
our digital application capabilities. So, so we have e-delivery, e-med, e-policy, e-signature, all of those things. And, and over 90% now of our business on the individual side is all digital electronic uh, capabilities. But one that comes to, to mind that really kind of really changed the things for us was we implemented an IP soft product called Amelia, which is really their a digital agent capability using NLP and uh, neural networks and things of that nature. And during COVID, we saw peaks and volumes in our short-term disability, long-term disability, as you can imagine. Um, and it was just over overburdening our call centers and our contact centers. And we were able to accelerate the, the implementation of these digital agent capabilities so it could alleviate and take on thousands of calls a day uh, for the common things that people call for. So where's my claim? You know, what is my, why is my claim pending? What's my eligibility of benefits and things of that nature. So by putting in this technology, it, one, it provides a, a much better experience for the consumer. They're not waiting on the call just to get a, a simple status. Uh, two, it frees up the capacity, again, of our individuals to provide that, that human touch for the calls that really need it. As you can imagine, we're in life insurance, we're in disability. So people are calling us in times of need. And we need people to be on the phone to provide that empathy and passion and, and you know, that, that human touch. Uh, so there's, we're really looking at the technology to leverage it for things that are kind of commodity that don't require that empathy and human touch. So our employees can provide it when it's really needed. Um, you know, claim status, you, know, you don't really need a human to provide that. And then an individual really probably doesn't want to wait on the line for that. They'd like to get that instantaneously. But if they have a complex concern or complex issue uh, in time of need, they're going to want to speak to somebody. So we're, we're trying to draw that balance as well between the two. And the, the thing I didn't say earlier, but we're really looking at it as we're trying to deal with your last digital experience. That's who we're competing with. We're not competing with our competitors, uh, you know, our traditional competitors, as you would think in the insurance or financial industry. So the expectations have really, uh, the bar has been raised quite dramatically uh, for whatever an individual is doing, whatever services they're, they're obtaining or purchasing. And that's where we're raising the bar to. We want to be that, again, as I mentioned earlier, the easiest business to do experience with. So I would say that, again, where can we touch the human aspect of it and where can we provide technology to, to streamline and, and take out the friction in the process? Right. Be, beating the customer how they, they want to engage. And I really like that competing with yeah. the last digital experience. I really like that. Um, so, so maybe, uh, Amir, jumping uh, back over to you, um, kind of building on that, that greenhouse um, concept of yours. And, and I also want to hear um, from you, Dean, because I think you have a really unique perch that you are CIO yep. and head of operations. When you build these use cases in the greenhouse, I mean, like, what is your thought process for, for integrating that within the rest of the organization? Or how do those uh, product teams, cross-functional teams integrate with operations, the other functions and BUs? And then maybe Dean could talk to that as well. Sure. So I think I think you are you're you're pointing a very important element. So when you have a good idea, how you get it actually at large scale, and when you're working in corporate environment, uh, you have a dynamic of many people with responsibilities needs to come together to 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 make something happen. So, Michael, I will get back to what I said before, because the scaling is about the team structure and how you organize the end-to-end -end responsibilities. The scaling is about how you reduce the dependencies. The scaling is about uh, uh, what kind of way of working you are applying to all of your teams, which is unique and which is actually everywhere the same. So we introduce one way of working uh, across uh, Discover uh, teams, and that is following practices in different teams, but at the same way. That's number one. Number two is uh, when you're working in a corporate environment, the concept of how you share information and practices and experiences, and that is very important. So we established so-called Discover Technology Academy, a place for those multidisciplinary teams to come and share their knowledge experience with others. So we are not going to invent and reinvent everything again and again. So the concept of Discover Technology Academy help us significantly to share our practices with others. 
And of course, automation, that is also a very important element. Getting back to your point about scaling, it's about way of working, it's about the way we share information and it's all about automation. So creating a small autonomous teams, which can work end to end in collaboration with support functions, with finance, with risk, with legal, and then having a mechanism of moving very fast from the test environment into production and see what's happened. That is something which we see today as a way of working. And that's what I call the way of scaling of good initiatives at Discover. Thanks. Thanks, Mir. That's, that's very comprehensive. Uh, Dean, did you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, sure. So we, we've taken kind of a really broad approach to innovation in, within Guardian. So we believe everybody can participate in innovation. So we've created, it, and it's really kind of an, we call it an idea hub where anybody can create and ask a question. The, the key thing to innovation we're finding is, is asking the right question and then to have people then come with concepts and ideas on how to solve those. So, and the way we go about that is, is we, we do what we call innovation challenges. So we have employee innovation challenges, our partners, our, our strategic partners, we challenge them as well. And it's a, it's a full encompassing uh, experience where anybody can generate an idea and it could be, you know, we, we think about innovation in three kind of core concepts, right? There's core innovation. It's just something you do today on a daily basis. Is there something you do differently or an idea how to do it better, faster, cheaper, whatever? Uh, there's adjacent innovation. If there's something out there that somebody else is doing, can we apply it in our industry, whether it's outside or in our industry? And then the last one is really what everybody thinks about when you say innovation is the big transformational type things. Yeah. But what we do with them is then we actually go through a true like shark type experience if an individual has an idea, you know, people vote on it. They do pairwise comparisons. It's a, it's a fairly defined process, but without a lot of overhead. And then we go through and try to get it to a minimum vial product that gets voted in. If it gets thumbs up or thumbs down, we allow these teams. And to Amir, your point, they're cross-functional teams. There's people from technology, people from operations, people from the legal side of the house. And we use office hours to try to expedite and speed things through the process so it doesn't get caught up in the you know, the legal and the regulatory requirements when we're not even sure if it's going to be something we would launch or not. So how do you keep the ball rolling? Uh, and that's worked really well for us. And then me having both roles, it's quite easy to influence the operations person because I'm the operations person as well. So it's, you know, getting the people to think about, is this a good idea? Do we want to try it? Do we want to, you know, do a minimum viable product? Uh, you know, I have the call centers, the contact centers, the new business, the technology, uh, and some other functions. So it allows us to really accelerate and not have to do a lot of uh, convincing. That's great, that's great. Well, uh, Amir and Dean, we really appreciate having you. Thank you.